think that this is like the worst seat on any commercial flight I've ever taken. It's just such an awful, awful place to be. I have a bit of a confession to make. I've never flown on an MD-80. Um, well, that's unless you count the time where I flew on an MD-87 and picked the wrong row and ended up looking at the side of an engine for two hours. But um, hopefully today that's all going to change because here in Kyrgyzstan there's an airline that operates the MD-80. So we're going to take a little ride over to Manas International Airport and take a flight, fingers crossed, on an MD-80. First job today then is to take a taxi for the 40 minute drive out to Manas International Airport. This in itself can be a nail biting experience but thankfully at this time in the morning the roads were quiet and we were there in no time at all. Domestic departures at Bishkek are tucked away in a dark corner of the terminal. Gone are the bright airy spaces in the international area, instead we get a hot crowded area downstairs. Oh, what is that window? Uh, window or no? Window? Yes, um, there. With that cleared up, I'd secured my window seat. It was time to head through security. So then, all checked in for Osh, and I'm in seat 33A, which tells me that it's very likely to be the MD83 that I can see sitting out there on the apron at the minute. Um, because I don't think the RJ85 has 33 rows, um, so it has to be the MD80, I think, with that many rows of seats in it. But looking forward to it, absolute chaos at check-in. Um, I just had no clue what was going on. There was no sort of queuing system or anything. You just sort of <laughs> just aim for a counter and talk to them. Um, so, yeah, typical um, former Soviet Union sort of experience here then. It's, um, <laughs> Bishkek Airport, but it um, all makes for a good, fun flight. But, um, and I've got a feeling this is going to be a fun flight. So we're just waiting now. We should be taking off in about an hour, so um, not long to wait airside here. And then off to Osh on the Tezjet MD83. <laughs> First though, I needed coffee. Barista coffee hasn't really made it to this part of the world yet, so I made my choice between either Nescafe or Nescafe. I opted for the Nescafe. Before long, a crowd of people descended on the gate area, indicating that it was time to board the flight. Social distancing hasn't really made it to Kyrgyzstan yet, and it's probably quite clear why. The second you leave even a slight gap, it's immediately filled by however many humans can fit into a given space. At this point, I just decided to give up on being the nice guy and join the pack to squeeze towards the door. After a short bus ride, we made it out to the waiting aircraft and I rejoiced as I figured out that we were indeed going to be on board an MD-80 today. Not only that, but they were also using the rear steps to board via the tail. What a result! My ride today then was first delivered in 1996 to Korean Air. It's since flown in Canada with Jets Go and in the US with Allegiant Air before it got too old even for them. Tezjet bought her in December 2019. Boarding through the tail of a plane never stops being incredibly cool. The only other aircraft I've ever done this on was the Yak 40. Ah well, it happened again. Fantastic scenery here in um, Kyrgyzstan, as you can see, out of the window. 
a gorgeous view. <laughs> Never mind. Might have to try and change my flight back and see if I can get on an MD-80 this afternoon and get a better seat because this is not brilliant. With my view for the next 40 minutes reduced to how many rivets I could count in the side of the engine, it was time to be reminded about the other terrible thing about sitting at the back of an MD-80. That horrendous noise. <laughs> engine started. This is the other reason why the back of the MD-80 is just a terrible place to be. Look at that. <laughs> And the noise! Oh, we only just started the engines. <laughs> Ouch. Thankfully, I've just managed to book on the return flight of the MD-80 later on today, back from Osh, so hopefully I might get a better seat on that one. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? I think we're taxiing out. I um, can't really... can't really see. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I just saw the control tower go past the top of the engine so I think we're on our way out to the runway. All aboard the magical mystery tour where you don't know where you're actually going to be until you actually step off the plane. <laughs> My first flight today then took me west out of Bishkek before turning on a southerly track towards the city of Osh. Flight time today was 38 minutes, cruising at 28,000 feet. Right, so airborne out of Bishkek on the test jet MD-80. Not that you can see much. Oh, the noise, man. Oh, this is horrendous. <laughs> this is like the worst seat on any commercial flight I've ever taken. The noise is just absolutely horrendous. The view is non-existent to make up for it. It's just such an awful, awful place to be. Um, but never mind, it's only a sort of 30 minute flight down to Osh. Apparently a beautiful scenic flight on a clear day when you don't have an engine in the way. But never mind, maybe we'll get to see that tonight. I've just booked myself on the flight back this afternoon from Osh on the MD-80, hopefully. So, well, fingers crossed, I might actually get a window seat with a window that you can see out of. I mean, we have a window. You just can't see a great deal out of it. Just <laughs> absolutely awful. Oh, well. I'm just going to try and shut my eyes and not think about it for half an hour until we get to um, Osh. I mean, the little bit of scenery that I did see out of the window looked quite pretty. It's just a shame that there was always that something just slightly blocking the view. At least the crew came around with the drink though, even if it was a shame that it wasn't something massively alcoholic. So apparently there is a life jacket under the seat. Um, I've just checked as I always do and there isn't. <laughs> so it's a good job we've only got a short flight over land on this flight. <laughs> well you might not get to see anything out the window but you at least do get a glass of water. The engine noise is just 
very slightly reduced its rumble at the side of me. I think we might be beginning our descent into Osh. I think. I mean, I suppose the good thing about not being able to see out of the window at all is that at least you don't get a view of your impending doom if anything happens to the plane. You've got to look on the brighter side, you know? And on the bright side, it seemed that my ride on the torture tube was almost over. Or at least that's what I gathered from the slightly changing shadows on the side of the engine. To the ground at least. I mean, who knows where we actually were in reality. again then ready to run the gauntlet of taxi drivers outside an airport. <laughs> I was actually going to be jumping back on a flight to Bishkek now with another airline, but obviously given the lack of window seat on that one, I've decided to hang around here all day and book a flight back later today with Tezjet to try and get another ride on the MD-80. We'll do the other airline um, tomorrow or something. Um, so for now, yeah, we've got to like a full day here in the city of Osh in southern Kyrgyzstan. So let's um, see if we can get a ride into the city and um, have a look around what is here at the city of Osh. I've sort of been unceremoniously dropped off somewhere in Osh. <laughs> so I don't know where I'm going now. We're going to have a wander around, see if we can find somewhere to eat and have a look around the city of Osh. All the airlines seem to have offices down here on this road, so interesting. You get to see some of the airlines that fly in and out of this part of the world. Test jet, Avia Traffic, Ural Airlines from Russia. Talk about a rather unfortunate name for a beauty salon. Welcome to the Nazi beauty salon. Mustache is a speciality, speciality, special, specialty, even. <laughs> I have to be honest with you, I haven't got a clue where I'm going. I hadn't planned to spend any time in Osh whatsoever. I was just literally going to hop on the next flight back to Bishkek. So now I've got a day here and I just seem to be walking forever and I've not really found anything. Just this big long street. So I found a river, albeit not a very pretty looking river. There really doesn't seem to be much to do here in Osh, I have to say. I mean, I'm sure it's got its nice bits, but it seems a little bit sort of, um, like there's not much to do here, to be fair. Like Bishkek, you've got some beautiful buildings and parks and all sorts of things like that. And here it just seems to be a few sort of dusty streets and, shops and things and people trying to sell you sim cards and stuff it's a bit sort of out of the way 
which has surprised me for the second city of Kyrgyzstan. Maybe there is more, I don't know. We'll keep walking and we'll find out. Looks like a park or something. Let's go and have a wander, see what it's like. I'm gonna find somewhere to sit down for a bit. I've been walking for miles now. It feels like I've been walking forever. I've been, well, they dropped me off about an hour and a half ago and I've just literally been constant walking since then, so. This old Soviet tank, look. Wow. It's a war memorial. It says Afghan. So presumably for the um, people who fought in the Afghan conflict from the with the Soviet Union back in the 80s. Wow. I right, got this dude here, look. Vladimir. Golubev. Golubev. Looks a bit like one of the guys out of One Direction, doesn't he? Ahead of his time in the old style stakes was old Vladimir from 1899. And just like that, we're out of the tranquility of that little park and back in Osh, <laughs> which is anything but tranquil. made it to a restaurant. The restaurant is Islambek. Islambek restaurant. Uh, so we're gonna see what we can get to eat. That's proper Kyrgyz kebab. Absolutely delicious. So I'm back here then at Osh Airport. We're about three hours early for the flight. I don't know what there's going to be to do here, but I fancied coming back because they've got Wi-Fi, they've got air conditioning, so <laughs> we should be good over here. So I'm back at the airport, hoping to get on the second test jet MD-83 of the day. Fingers crossed it's an MD-83. I'd be really gutted if my only two flights on an MD series end up being in that crappy window, but um, we'll see. Let's head inside and find out. So the airport here at Osh seems pretty modern actually, um, compared to a lot of places in this part of the world. It's a very modern and bright and spacious terminal build, nice and cool with the air conditioning as well, um, to spend a few hours. And they've got free Wi-Fi, so I'm going to sit and camp out here for a couple of hours now until the Tesjet MD-80 hopefully is ready to go to Bishkek. Right, so we're just one hour now from departure and nobody's turned up at the check-in desk yet. We're still waiting here. Still says on time. Mm. I'm not thinking it will be. <laughs> and there's no aircraft on its way in yet from Bishkek, so who knows what is going to go on with this flight. Um, we'll find out very soon, I guess. Finally some staff turned up and it was time to check in for what I was hoping would be my second MD-80 of the day. Thank you, Spasira. Yeah, remember what I said about social distancing in Bishkek? Oh my giddy aunt. Oh my god. That was bloody unbelievable. Never mind. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Oh, we've got to get through security now. After all that excitement, I needed a drink. Thank you. After the chaos of checking in, it was time to find out if my gamble had paid off and if there was an MD-80 on the way in. 
I've just heard a plane land. I'm really hoping it's the MD80 um, and that we actually get a decent window view on this one. Except it wasn't the MD80. It was an RJ85. Worse still, it was one I'd actually flown on before around 15 years ago when it was flying for Brussels Airlines. Nowadays it lives here in Kyrgyzstan taking unfortunate passengers backwards and forwards across the country. Still, at least I'd be able to see out of the window on this one, right? You have to be taking the mic. I mean like, what are the odds? Oh, Two engine views in a row, nice. Um, I mean, I don't mind the RJ85, in fact it was my favourite aircraft for a long time, um, for many years, and the 146, but it ain't an MD80 is it? You can still fly on these like, in various places around the world, the MD80 is getting a very rare beast and every time I get that engine view at the, that crappy seat at the back of the plane, it, well, it could very well be my last time on the MD80 and who knows. Fingers crossed we'll get on one at some point, but in the meantime we've got this lovely view of an RJ85 engine for the next hour. Um, it's an interesting aircraft, it's falling to bits, I don't know how old this thing is, it absolutely stinks of cigarette smoke on board. It's all yellowed, so I don't know <laughs> whether um, smoking's a thing on here, there's no smoking signs on, but um, it certainly smells of cigarette smoke when you get on. And it's pretty beat up, in a very tired condition. but never mind a one hour flight on Tezjet back to Bishkek now looking forward to getting back in my room it's been a bit of a day so it's half an hour since the time that we should have took off we're still on the ground and it's hot it's like an oven an oven that smells of cigarettes although sound like something's happening we might be on our way back to Bishkek then took us north from Osh back to the city of Bishkek. Flight time on this leg was 34 minutes, cruising at 25,000 feet. I mean, I'm not mad I missed out on the MD-80. Although I suppose I, I am really. I'm also quite upset. Um, every time I have booked on an MD-80, it was on the understanding that it was probably going to be the last time I was ever going to get the chance to ride on an MD-80. It was the same with Scandinavian Airlines. Um, it was the same with so many others I've had booked in the meantime that have all been cancelled on me um, or swapped to something else. And this, I really felt that today was going to be that my chance to guarantee myself a ride on an MD-80 before they're all gone forever. Um, and yeah, I did get a ride on an MD-80 this morning, but that bloody awful seat at the back of the plane again where you can't see anything and I just I feel like giving up on the whole MD-80 thing to be honest now I've been trying for so many years to actually get a ride on one and get a decent view out the window on an MD-80 and it's just just never happened 
um, which is a shame really because they're such a beautiful aircraft um, such a lovely plane and I just yeah just wish it would have been a bit different the RJ85 well it's alright to be fair it used to be my favourite plane um, but that said they're not exactly rare you can still fly on them all over the world although they are getting a bit long in the tooth now and a bit old but it's still not the same as an MD-80 is it really especially when you can't even see out of the bloody window on this one either but hey it's just been one of them days really hasn't it let's get back to Bishkek get myself a beer or something and just try and process the day um, that's all you can do isn't it really My round trip to Osh and back today then cost me 46 pounds or around about 63 US dollars, working out at a price of 12 pence per mile. Honestly for the 30 minute flight down to Osh and back I thought the price was right and it was certainly an interesting experience even if I couldn't see anything out of the window. Make sure you hit the subscribe button though because I've got loads of different Kyrgyz airline flights coming very soon. As always, I'd like to say a big thanks to my Patreons. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, live weekly Zoom calls with me, and much more. My lesson from earlier flights learned, I booked my taxi through the Yandex app, which is pretty decent in this part of the world. It's a crazy busy time of day here at um, Manas Airport. Um, and my Yandex driver has asked if we can just pick up another passenger before we go into Bishkek, so we have to queue to get back into the car park. Um, and it's just mental. Ben albay me tip kalp teyim mi? Arka var tur bratan da çıkışta tapka var inas çiğiz ne oldu? Hayda arka bratan. He's gone in to get his other passenger. So before we headed into town, we got a scenic tour of the outskirts of Bishkek as we took the other family to their house. Hey, back in the hotel. Oh my goodness, what a day that was. Oh, I'm so glad to be back. Um, absolute nightmare of a day. Just kept on getting from bad to worse. Like even getting in that taxi and he decided to pick up the other family and just trudge around the outskirts of, of um, Bishkek um, on the way into my hotel again. Oh, flipping heck, that was a nightmare of a day. Um, well, on that disappointment, um, yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a day really, hasn't it? And I'm really gutted I couldn't get a decent window seat on that MD83. I'm really gutted they swapped it for an Avro um, RJ85 on the way back. Um, and when we got to Bishkek, I probably saw the reason why, because the MD80 was parked on the ramp with the engine cowlings all open. Um, so yeah, probably a good job that um, that um, they didn't operate the flight if they needed that much maintenance and stuff doing. But um, even still, it's just, oh, what a day. And it's just, that's the way it goes, really. You win some, you lose some. In the words of Kenny Rogers, you've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Does that apply here? I don't know. I'm, I'm beyond tired. I'm probably not making any sense whatsoever. So, on that great disappointment, <laughs> thanks for watching. Take care. 
and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.